XP1K was definitely the gnarliest, hardest, most grueling, rough on your mind, rough on your body project I've, I've ever been a part of. It's just so different and so unique and I was glad to be a part of it and be able to sit here now and, and just enjoy it and, and look back at the pictures and, and video and say, we created this. We created this. The idea was pretty simple. We wanted to go find a driver in a location that we could show the world how cool these vehicles are and how fun they are and you know how capable they are of doing things that only really race cars can do. So for me as UTV Underground and Mad Media began discussing the ideas of doing a bigger piece, the first guy crossing my mind was RJ. And obviously with the relationship growing with Polaris, it was really the perfect combination. Here we had arguably one of the most talented up and coming drivers in the sport of off-road, who was also the face of Polaris and the UTV racing industry. So one of the first things we did is we went out and scouted Kaiser Eagle Mountain and right away we saw the potential for shooting a UTV in that environment. I mean, it was just sized perfectly. There were natural obstacles. There was the potential to enhance and create our own obstacles. All kinds of stuff that we knew we could build a course through and around. So very quickly we had a dynamic location, an awesome driver, a list of stunts that we wanted to do, and the perfect vehicle platform with the XP1000. When you're working with Man Media, you're working with the best and they want what's going to be the best, you know? And when we first went out and just walked the site and checked it out, it was like some stuff was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to really do that, but I'll try. And you know, there's some things you look at and you're like, dude, this is so sketchy. You know, I know what a car does on the racetrack, but when you take all these variables that, you know, are unknown to me, it was just, you know, it was just, all right, well, I'll take what I know and go for it. When I looked at the, like, trick list for the first time, I was like, I don't know about this. It's some of the stuff I, I didn't know. I'd never drove down a huge mountain before that's gravelly and, and while well, it was all new to me, I just had to say, okay, well, let's try it. So we get up to the top and RJ and I are looking down and all of a sudden we're both like, dude, this is pretty gnarly, you know? This is crazy. And, you know, I think I contributed to him second guessing a little bit and, you know, I'm doubting it and I'm worried for his safety. And it's one of those moments where it's like, dude, we just gotta go for it. The helicopter's up, the film crew's here. Like, this is stunt number one. He was confident, but, you know, we're asking him to do things that nobody's ever done in a UTV, let alone cars. We're not doing this with safety nets or, you know, cables or, you know, special effects. This is all real. I mean, he really did all that stuff. And if he came up short, the consequences could be really, really bad. And we have to give a lot of credit to RJ for getting in the car and executing everything that we dreamt up, that we asked him to do. I knew before we ever even made this deal happen, I, I already knew in my head who I wanted to build the dream machine uh, for me personally, but for this project. And that was Kevin Croyer building an engine, Mark Holes building a chassis, and Randy Anderson sort of overseeing it and making sure everything was just right. Yeah, I mean, this, this project was unique because of the release of the car and the fact that there wasn't a, a production vehicle out yet. So, so there was a lot of things that had to be tied together from a lot of different places. We were doing the engines on our side, Holtz Racing Products was building the car on their side. The team was figuring out where they were going to film and, and what they needed to do and the graphics and the body work. And, and it all had to tie together at the end of the road. So there was a lot of communication amongst the different people to try and make this thing happen. This project was unique because the, we were building kind of a race version of a car that really wasn't even in production yet. So it had its challenges. The parts availability was really limited. The time frame was really tight. From the bits and pieces we had and some drawings and some pictures, you know, we created this, this car for this project. Usually you get a production vehicle and when everybody else gets them, you know, once they're, once they're released and, and then you kind of go to work on them and, 
and you are able to just kind of slowly develop products, you know, we, we condensed all that down into a six week time period with a, with a car that didn't exist. Got a, a list of like 20 stunts that most of them have never really been done before in any kind of off-road vehicle, let alone a UTV. So not only do we have to build one car for this project, we have to build two and, and be able to have them withstand the, the punishment that they're going to endure through this, you know, through this project. You know, the XP1K motor was uh, a, a unique project because it was something that, that was kind of full tilt. We were able to take the crankshaft from Polaris that, that they manufactured and do some modifications to it, um, weld it, stroke it, um, grind it, reheat, treat it, bought some aftermarket rods that we had helped design, designed our own uh, pistons for it, CNC ported the cylinder head, um, came up with some cams and lifter buckets for it. And, and, uh, and put it all together and ran it on the dyno and, and made 205 and we thought that was pretty good power. We didn't do a whole lot of extra tuning on the engine dyno because we wanted to see how the packaging of the car was going to work. By the time we got done with the car on the chassis dyno, we were making 190 plus horsepower to the rear wheels, which is just exciting for, for a car like that. You know, we thought we were doing pretty good in some of our race UTVs that make half that horsepower to the rear wheels. And to be able to double that was pretty spectacular. Absolutely the most powerful UTV motor that we've ever seen. It's the first for a 12 inch stroke shock in a UTV. Um, big aluminum bodies, adjusters on them, and it's just like nobody's done it before. They stepped way out of the box on this vehicle. It changed the design, it changed everything. The front end geometry, steering geometry, it's all new, all different and it's the right car for the right project. I'm not sure any other vehicle could come close to what they pulled off. This car is unreal. I mean, I can honestly say I don't think there's anything else like it. I mean, it's got a turning brake in it. It's got huge amounts of horsepower, huge amounts of travel. You can't believe that it's a UTV when you drive it. It's like a race car put on steroids. This car has over 200 horsepower at the crankshaft. It, it's going to weigh less than 1,400 pounds, you know, full of fluids, ready to run. It has all the same components as any, you know, modern full-blown race car. It's big, big shocks, big springs, big brakes, big tires. It has 16 to 18 inches of wheel travel. Uh, it's all-wheel drive. It's got all the safety features of a, of a trophy truck. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's definitely not a trophy truck, but it's definitely not a golf cart. As a team, we knew we needed to build a car that was beyond anything that had ever been built for the UTV industry. To make this video special, the car and driver both had to be stars. The idea you have going into a project like this and what actually happens is totally different. I had a feeling it was going to be like that, you know, I show up and there's helicopters, there's, you know, 40 people on set and they're all here with the same goal to make, you know, the, the best video ever and, and they're, you know, just as much part of this video as, as me, you know, I was just the one that was being chased around. We had helicopters and RC helicopters chase cars, we had all kinds of cool stuff, you name it, it was there. And it was cool to be able to just see all that and experience it. We put a very high level of expectation on ourselves and our crew because we're enthusiasts. You know, there are just some things that you can't fake and your audience knows that. We had a production crew of about 40 people and we worked from about five o'clock in the morning until nine, 10 o'clock at night, every night for about eight days and we used every available tool that we could find to try to capture the precision driving that RJ was doing out there. We used a full-size helicopter, we used RC helicopter, we filmed car to car with chase cam, we had dollies, jibs, everything you can think of, and really we just picked the best tools for the best stunts, because the goal was to showcase how remarkable the stunts were that RJ was doing in every single sequence. I knew Mad Media was the best in the industry, for motorsports, you know, viral content and media and whatnot. But this project really, for me, was like, dude, these guys, this is why you paid to have Mad Media working with you because 
they don't leave any stone unturned, you know? Matt and Josh, they push the right amount to make things right, to make things cool. Um, the guys behind the cameras, they know what's up, you know? I mean, everyone from Ryan and Rich and Eddie to the hired guns, uh, Milan and Dogger, you know, these guys are pros and they're the best at what they do. There's definitely the what if factor in this video, you know, there's, there's consequences and when you want to do something great, I guess you have to overcome that kind of stuff, you know. It's hard to put into perspective some of the sketchy stuff that did go down, because unless you're there, unless you're in the seat, jumping over this huge mine shaft in the ground that was 60 feet down, that's a long ways to fall and it's going to do some damage, you know. So there's just all kinds of stuff like that, casing jumps, flying off saucers, is, the fact that it could happen just puts that little bit of fear in you. RJ would suit up and make it happen. And I mean, the things he made that car do during the shoot were just spectacular. And you know, when you watch the video, you see how crazy everything is, but it goes really fast, bang, bang, bang. But for us, like living through it was really crazy. Like for me, when I watch the video, it doesn't seem that gnarly to me. And that's because the anxiety that I felt just watching this guy go go at it and accomplish these stunts um, that was intense uh, intense at a level that just watching it on video um, it doesn't duplicate it for me but it's really cool to stand over the shoulder and watch someone experience it for the first time um, because those feelings kind of come back like wow man I remember when we got to that saucer and you know Matt's like can you just get that tire right up to the edge of the saucer and I'm thinking like oh my gosh he's gonna go over the edge that was one of the coolest things about this project is there's no fake stunts. It wasn't me sliding through a cone and if I messed up, the cone fell over, picked it back up, tried to slide and get close again. It was, hey, you gotta slide through these two concrete pillars and if you hit the pillar, you're gonna rip off the back corner of the car and we're gonna all be pissed at you because we're gonna have to rebuild it. So, I mean, that was a cool part of the project. It was, it was all real. And it's a little nervy to watch what goes on and when you're standing there, it's you see it on video, it's one thing. When you're standing there looking at him, you're going, holy cow, this is going to be something. And, it, and it, it's a little testy, but, you know, it was right up RJ's alley, right up, you know, Mad Media's alley. This is what they do. There's a line where you got to push it to its limits, you know, otherwise someone else is going to try to outdo you, you know, and I think that's what kind of we did on this project. We've outdone a lot of things that have ever been seen in the UTV world, so. It's just awesome to be able to take something, show the world what its potential is, and just have fun doing it and do all these crazy things. We wanted to create a brand and not just, you know, the name of a video so that we could tie it into multiple mediums and keep it going. XP1K was designed to be a campaign. It wasn't just going to be a single video clip. The campaign consisted of a teaser, a trailer, the main XP1K clip, a GoPro edit and a remix edit. And that was because we had so much footage that we wanted to share every single thing that happened out there with everybody that was into the project. It was a good experience for me. I like doing all of it and they're long days and some of them were hot, some of them were miserable, but it was all worth it in the end to me. And the whole experience was, was awesome, and I, every day I woke up and had fun driving the car. This project could not have been executed without the overwhelming support that we got from all of our sponsors and all of our partners involved. Polaris delivered us a platform that was perfect for building on and creating two supercars. Falcon Fire guys were amazing yeah, throughout this whole project. And, helping us with filming and making sure we have the right tires and you know being on set and assisting as mechanics I mean, those guys went above and beyond. I, we couldn't have completed the project if it wasn't for Falcon. We got great safety support from Mastercraft and Impact and of course our friends at South Point took care of us as well. We've done a lot of business with large corporations and you know working with Polaris has just been awesome. I mean not only do they get it but they you know, back us up in our decision-making process and give us the room to do what we do best. 
Yeah, the question is what's next, right? We've done this whole project and now I have an idea of what to expect and it's like, when can I do something like this again? When can I try jump farther? Try to get more sideways and, and drift through something even sketchier on fire or whatever, you know? It's what's, what's next? That's what this is about, is trying to do something new, do something cool, and then figure out what's next and now what? Our goal with Mad Media is really simple. We want to take the best drivers in the world to the best locations and put them in the best vehicles and showcase them and show people how incredible these motorsports and these athletes and these vehicles are.